Okay, well, we are in the middle of doing some maintenance, long overdue maintenance on this Volvo 760. It's an 88 model. And I uh, pulled off the starter, the one that on the right there is the one that came off this car. And it was not working right. I thought the starter was bad. Something's wrong with the starter. You turn the key and it just clunk. And you just try to, you know, get it to work, tap on it, just nothing seemed to have an effect. And occasionally it'd run and work. So I took it off and that was a battle. The bolts on this face the rear and they're in there as tight as Dick's hat band. And it's just amazing that I didn't break a tool getting those two bolts out. But once you get the bolts out and get the connections off, it's pretty cut and dried. That thing just drops out from the bottom. But it's not a pleasant job by any means. And then when I got off here and tested it off the car, it works fine. So I don't know what's up. I think it may turn out to be a problem with this aftermarket battery connection but anyway that's okay because I needed the room I needed the room to get to something else to replace under here and what we're going to do is we're going to replace what's called the oil separator and uh, this is here's the new one let me show you the new one first kind of know what we're looking at this is direct from Volvo ordered it off the internet but the way this works is this mounts to the engine block down there on the side of the engine block and this part goes down in there to the engine block this side does it's got a seal that goes right here so you want to always be sure you replace that seal when you replace this and this is a there's a tube that comes off of this I'm about to show you that and it's kind of a I guess you'd say this just kind of a it's like a PCV arrangement but these don't use a PCV, they use this. Never mind my neighbors. What the hell y'all doing out in this part of time? Come back, doggy. <sighs> so anyway, the purpose of this thing is essentially to separate liquid oil into one drain to go back down in the engine and then the blow-by gases can come out and go back into the intake to be burned again. It kind of leads in. There's a tube that comes over. This Actually, this tube is it. It goes right into the uh, intake stream. So that's a loose explanation of how that works. But this is definitely, like I said, this is a maintenance item because it gets, eventually it gets plugged up and especially if you're behind on your maintenance Well, you're down from the trailer park. Let's hang out a minute till that calms down over there. Can't hear myself think. Okay, anyway. As I was... Well, I only thought they were gone. As I was saying, anyway, these things get stopped up and, and the hose can get sludged up, especially if you've not been very vigilant with your oil changes. So you have to replace this. Some people say you can clean it, but I don't think so. And this car had a problem with it. What happens is, as I said earlier, when this thing gets blocked and the engine stops being able to breathe and get rid of its blow-by gases, the pressure builds up in the engine and then it starts looking for a way out. And sometimes it comes out around the cap. Sometimes it blows a seal, which this one did. I showed you uh, in another video on the timing belt series on this car that I'm in the middle of that uh, cam seal is blown out on this car so that's what happens that's if you don't change this thing that's what happens so be sure you change it about every 40,000 miles now this thing is located in an obscene place <laughs> it's under the intake that back there not that little circle thing it's back there behind it let's see if I can get the light kind of repositioned there I'll show you as best I can. That's the bottom of it, that there where the hoses go in. It's mounted to the block. I think those are 13 millimeter two bolts holding in. So that's why I was glad to have the starter out of the way. I can at least reach my hand down in there and get it. And then up top we've got a we have a large breather hose which comes off the top of that thing. Up there. And it comes up here that's it right there that thing and if you look kind of look down in there 
there's that white little it's a like a check valve and that see that greasy hose that's laying there I just pulled that off that it's just a vacuum hose of sorts and I don't know what's going on with that thing but it's just seeping oil I mean it's I've never seen anything like that <laughs> it's all soft and it ain't in good shape so I believe I can get a screwdriver down under here and just uh, pry that rubber line loose and pull it up but that has to come out and then we'll work on taking that actual box out so that's how that works and I do my best to try to explain these things it's hard to, sometimes to show you actually doing it because it's hidden so bad in there that you couldn't see anything you just see me with my hands jammed up under the side of this thing and you don't know what I'm doing so just try to follow along best you can and ask questions And you know, people long said, you know, some people, well, people long said that, you know, these European cars, they take a lot of maintenance, and that's kind of true, they do. So I wouldn't own one if you're not into doing that kind of thing. You know, you can drive a little Mazda or a Toyota or what have you and barely do any maintenance, but these are just, they're just, like somebody said recently, they're just different creatures, so you got to keep up with this stuff. The lady that had this car, she didn't, she didn't do any of it. She didn't know to do it. So, so anyway, uh, I'm going to do that now, and I'll show you what we extract out of there. See you back in a bit. Okie dokie then. I am in the process of taking this uh, oil separator out, so I pulled this piece of line here out. I just went under and got the, my screwdriver under the, the bottom of it and just kind of pried this up off that box. The box is right, look, there's the top of it right there. That's that thing I just showed you, so it's top of that. And so I had to end up taking a, one of the valve cover, little cap bolts here, cap screws, whatever you want to call it, that holds that down. I had to take that and move off so I can move that. But, and then this leads over here and we're gonna need to take that off and make sure that's clear not obstructed because of what I just told you in the previous segment. So now I've taken a oh, I've taken a paper towel and I've tried to wipe off that box, that oil separator as well as possible. We'll try not to get much gunk down in the engine and then we'll see if we can slide that thing on out. So we'll take those two thirteen bolts out. Probably just use a wrench on that. Now I want to mention something. You see that you use the terms oil separator, you hear that tossed around a lot on Volvos and you hear flame trap. Well in these cars, these B230 engines, that the turbos do not use a flame trap. So disregard any reference to flame trap on these cars. On if it's a turbo. If it's just a plain, not turbo, yeah, it's got a flame trap. It's a little filter looking device there that's down in there and it's basically to keep a backfire from going down into the crankcase and blowing the engine apart. So anyway, wish me luck. I'm going to go ahead and start working on that and see if we can get that extracted and get that job done today. See you in a minute. There it is. Hmm. Okay, got it out. It took some weaseling. But I got it out. You got some stuff that's above it and beside it, and you got to kind of figure around with it. I'm going to see. I can't show you from up here, so I'm going to see if I can manage to stick this camera down in here and show you where that goes. I've cleaned that little spot up. Uh, all right. I can't see what I'm looking at, but that should be it. You see that big hole right there? That's where it mounts into. And, that's where there's supposed to be an O-ring. I didn't notice one on it, but we're going to look again here. You see that thing to the left sticking up? Looks like a piece of plastic. That's a drain tube that goes down in the engine. Don't take that out. You don't have to take that out. Don't even look at it. <laughs> Just clean it. Cleanse it on the outside. And then we got our hose out. So let's take a look at this thing. Boy, this has been a day at it. If you're going to do all this to your own car, 
I, and it's your main transportation, I would probably uh, plan to sideline the thing for a weekend. Yeah. It's a Volvo part. And that's a 927. I wonder if that's a date toad. That one, this car was built in 2 of 88, so that's theoretically that could be in the 92nd day of 1987, which would be about three months in. That's kind of early, but it sure looks nasty. I guess that's the O ring right there. It's just kind of jammed in there. Let me see if I can pick that out. That'd be something if it didn't have an O ring in it, because everybody says, We're getting O ring. Yeah, that's the O ring, because it's. Oops. It's barely moving, and it's hard as a rock. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's the O ring. I'll just, I'll tell you what, don't move to the south if you don't like being bugged by insects. I guess that's the old ring, but either way, you're supposed to put one on it when you go back in with it, so. So, I wonder, I hate to put my lips on that junk, but that, that's what she said. Can blow through it and see if you can get any air through this thing. Well, there's airflow through part of it. I'm going to stop off part with my finger and see. Huh, I don't know. That appears to be clear. That would be interesting. Hmm. Well, we'll keep looking around. Something sure blew the cam seal out. Maybe it fell out. Maybe this thing didn't have blow by causing that. You know, that's what everybody preaches. That's the party line that if it blows the seal out, then it's got too much blow by. But it had a cam job done on it. And I know that that seal that's in there, that orange one, that's not an L ring seal. L ring's the original manufacturer. So I'm going to look at that line that goes from the top of that box. That has to be clear. So I'm going to look at it in the air box connection all that and poke around and see what I see in there. Okay, well I'm putting this PCV system back together now. Uh, put the new box in down there. Just real simple. Put the green seal on the bottom of it. Put the two bolts back in, tighten it up. Put the elbow pipe on. Put the white little junction pipe, I guess you would call it. I cleaned both those out. They were not stopped up, but they were dirty. And then this was a really oily looking weird uh, vacuum line that goes between that white port assembly and the intake plenum and it's got a little port right here you can see in there somewhere there it is right there and it wasn't plugged all the way but it was close to it so I took a small drill bit and just reamed it out and I'm about to put another piece of line on here. We're going to use that one. I don't know what the deal is with that. But, and I cleaned this big plastic. This is actually a plastic line that's inside a rubber coating housing sheath, whatever you want to call it. So it was uh, it's kind of crusty. So anyway, I'll put that back on here in a minute. I did check over here on the elbow to make sure it was not stopped up. It's not. So anyway, uh, that's going to do it. I'll show you all it put back together a little bit later on, but that's pretty simple to, to accomplish. So we'll do that, and that should get our PCV system back in good stead. So if it has problems after that, I don't know what's up with it. So we'll see. We'll just see. See ya.